Hi everyone, it's Coach Mo. I know I'm wearing kind of a funny hat today, but work with me here for a second. I want you to focus a little bit on what you are grateful for today. We're gonna to be covering what the texting generation is teaching us, and I've got some surprises in store for you about that. But to really own the energy and the power of Motivational Monday, at this time of the year, we begin to start looking back at how the year has been and thinking about what it is that we still want to do to make this year the best ever. So make sure that you start focusing on what you are grateful for. And I'll take off this hat <laughs> and start focusing on the agenda for today, which is what is this texting generation teaching us? Now, if you're watching this, more than likely you text. More than likely you've learned a few things about yourself and about this whole concept of texting. There's gonna be some things that we learn about this texting generation of which we're all a part of. Last episode, last Motivational Monday, I spoke about the millennial generation and how they're truly not a group of misfits. They're actually on a path to help lead the way to the next level of expansion for humanity. And it's our job as leaders, as managers, as people who are further along in our careers. And please let me know if you're here by commenting in the, uh, in the chat. I'd love to know that you're here and say hello to you. Um, the millennials are helping us engage at a different level. They're helping us engage and appreciate what all sorts of diversity is all about. And so here we are today to talk about what the texting generation has taught us. And I'm gonna put all of us in the texting generation. Okay. So here's a few things. Number one, you can't get across everything you need in a text. It is simply not the answer to all communication vehicles. You just can't communicate everything and it's not the best vehicle for communication. Number two, it teaches us what a short attention span human beings could have if we let them. And if your attention span has shrunken because you're part of this ever growing, ever expanding text, social media generation of which I am as well, we learn that if we don't really Oh, did I do something there? If we don't really have a good attention span on things, it's going to affect everything in our lives. We have to, have to, have to be aware of how quickly we learn a short attention span and possibly do something about it in order for that not to be a problem for us in our everyday lives and careers. And I just want to make sure that I'm seeing you guys. Um, if anyone's here, you could just shoot me a, uh, a chat. The, uh, the format I'm doing my Facebook lives on has changed. So it's the second, second week in a row that the new format is here. And I just want to make sure that, that I'm here. And uh, there we go. Thank you, Chira, for saying hello. Wasn't sure if I was uh, live and making things happen uh, for us. So glad to see you here uh, on this wonderful Motivational Monday. So the texting generation has taught us that not every communication is great for texting, which also means that not every communication is great for email. Not every communication is the best for phone calls. You've got to choose your communication vehicle. If you want your career and your life to go well, you have to be mindful of that. Not everything is just a quick text. Also, 
Uh, great to see you, Paula and Holly. Uh, nice to see you, ladies. Also, the texting generation is teaching us that our attention span has collapsed. And we may need to do certain things to build that attention span back up because chances are your job demands something more from you than this quick, short attention span that we are learning. Yes, folks, this is what's happening. As we become more and more the texting generation, more and more communicating through that short, quick vehicle, we are learning, our brains are creating new neural pathways to have a shorter and shorter attention span towards things. The other thing that we're learning is that we can't drive and do something else. Maybe we can talk on the phone, maybe. But driving, until we get auto driving cars going, until we get that whole thing figured out, driving requires our attention. So anything that requires our attention, texting doesn't go with. It doesn't. So I have this cool thing on my car, Apple CarPlay. If you guys have it, you understand what it's all about. And I'm literally having my text messages read to me while I'm in my car, while I'm driving. And you know what? That in and of itself can be distracting, but it's a whole lot better than me trying to drive and do this or put the steering wheel. Da, 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 da. No way. Uh, the statistics are compelling to not text and drive. If you have a device in your car, like an Apple CarPlay that can help you um, read your texts and you can dictate texts. Great. But here's the thing that's now limiting as well, because you can only say so much and do so much back and forth with all that. So the whole idea of multitasking goes out the window. Boom. We know now because of what we've experienced with driving and texting that you can't really put your attention on two things. It's on half on each and maybe a, a third on fear <laughs> while you're doing that. So it really distracts from the overall attention that you need to give to the primary thing that you are needing to focus on. Take that to the bank because it is so important that you allow that truth to ripple into your life so that you're not focusing on five things while you're trying to do one big important thing. Little note, please, when you're in a meeting, put your freaking cell phone down. You're not that important, are you? That you can't be in a meeting that you're supposed to be at, that you're supposed to contribute at and or learn or gain content or information so that you can do your job better or that you can communicate to your team in a certain way. If you are not paying attention in a meeting, number one, why are you there? Number two, how rude, disrespectful, not only of yourself, disrespecting yourself, but also everyone else who's paying attention. This is something that I coach on pretty regularly in my kick-ass workshop and in some of the ongoing programs that my uh, graduating clients are part of. We, we coach on this all the time because it is a problem in the workplace. If you're a leader at a meeting, you have every right to ask the participants in that meeting to focus. Make the meeting shorter if you have to, but have them focus on the meeting at hand because it's important if they're at that meeting, if you're at a meeting, you're at that meeting for a reason. You better get clear on why you're at that meeting. And if you're like, well, we do all kinds of meetings and I'm not really needed and things aren't that important. Oh yeah, maybe you're missing the point. Maybe you're missing the reason why that meeting is important to you. Maybe you're so distracted that you haven't been able to extract the meeting value for you and or your team. So get right with that, please. Meetings are about certain things. They have agendas, they have sharing, they have a reason that they exist. Uh, we do a company meeting, a team meeting every single Monday and everyone goes around and we celebrate and we get everyone refocused on what we're here to do and serve. And we go through some agenda items and update and review things so that everyone's on the same page for the rest of the week. I'm a virtual company. People are all over the, the world in my company. And it's important for us to have that weekly touch in. Very super easy since we're on our computers to actually have multiple things going on. And you know what, if I see one of my team members veering off, I know that they're not paying attention. Like I wanna see you focused on my important stuff for the time that we're in the meeting. Stay focused, stay engaged, and be a part of it. And as a leader or manager, you have every right 
to ask your attendees to your meetings to do the same. Your cell phone is not part of that undying attention. It's not. So if you're that person who can't commit to the meeting that you're at and you have to be on your cell phone because you're that important, leave the freaking meeting for the time that you need to be on your phone. Even if it's texting, you're not texting in secret. It's not happening. If you think you are, you're not, you can't hide it. People know you're looking down. You it, it's, you're not doing it. You're not, you're not secretly doing that. So however important you need to be to answer that text right there while you're otherwise busy, you need to sort out for yourself. I'm just saying, okay. The other thing that the texting generation is teaching us is that verbal communication is gold. Gold. Pick up the phone and call people. Pick up the phone and make a personal connection with people. I love this whole rationalization of, well, I'll just text to see if they're available. Why are you doing that? Take a look at why you're doing that. Ooh, they're really busy. Ooh, I don't want to bother them. If they're not available, they're not going to pick up the phone and say, hello, you can leave a voicemail message and then they'll call back. They're going to be touched that you cared enough to pierce through this texting habit to actually make a personal phone call to them. They're going to love it. And if they don't love it, do you really want that person to be in your circle of network and colleagues? And I mean, if it's just a work colleague, um, whatever, um, you have every intention, every uh, permission to speak to people personally who you work with. Pick up the phone, call people, text messages don't suffice and don't hide behind the veneer of a text message looking for permission to talk to that person. Don't do that. It's a waste of time. And I'm going to tell you something, successful, busy people don't want to waste their time getting a text message from you to ask permission to call them. Just freaking call them. What are you putting that extra step in for? If you boil that down, I know why you're putting that extra step in there for, because you have self doubt, you have fear. Um, you don't feel a certain sense of worthiness of reaching out and calling that person. You don't feel like your time is as worthy as theirs, et cetera. That is all bad habits getting in the way of you being awesome. So this text generation, again, that we are all a part of is teaching us some very, very simple, very profound and very deep concepts of success. You have to have the ability to concentrate on the task at hand, the, the thing at hand. If you're focusing on thinking about something, think about something. If you're in the middle of doing a project or needing to complete something, don't keep getting distracted. I know so many women I talk to on our clarity calls who say, Mo, I've got ADHD. Okay. It's possible that those pathways were enhanced by this texting generation thing that we'll are, we are all a part of. You can train your brain to have better concentration skills. You can train your brain to be more present moment awareness. Now, hey, it very well could be legit that your brain just is wired in funky ways and causing you some trouble. But I'm gonna tell you what, there are techniques also to help you move that toward levels of higher concentration, higher focus, present moment awareness. Present moment awareness is also an important leadership skill it's important driving. It's important when you're talking to someone. It's important when you're at a meeting. It's important if you want to maintain friendships with people. It is so much more valuable when you're meeting with someone or having lunch with a friend that you are divorcing yourself from your phone. Now, if you say, Hey, look, I've, I've got a few things that might interrupt us during this lunch. I'm going to just be kind of like watching out for those things. It's not that you're not important to me, but I've got these things pending from this morning. Thanks for understanding. Powerful words to put you in a powerful position. Don't love it. I've done that before. I get it. Um, 
but think about it from the other person's perspective. Oh, your other stuff is more important than me. I get it. And it erodes the relationship. It erodes the friendship. Really do your best not to do that. Really do your best to have present moment awareness. And yes, Debbie, success is being present. And those who can truly be present with others are remembered for their ability to, to be present. And it's really important when people are sharing information with you that you are listening actively and you are taking it in and, and integrating that to what that means for you, whether that be work or personal, it is really super important. I got distracted the other day. I was out to dinner with my partner and um, I asked to be seated where I could see the TV. A lot of my family's in the Washington DC area. The Washington Nationals are in the National League Divisional Series. The winner goes to the World Series. I'm sort of engaged in this series and the game. And I think the game was in the sixth or seventh inning when I went to dinner and I'm seated with the TV up here. And she says something important to me just when there was a base hit causing runs to score for the Nationals, put them ahead. It changed the game and it allowed the Nationals to win. And I got distracted for a minute, totally blew off what she was saying. She got upset at me. I don't blame her. I felt terrible, but I really wanted to watch the game. Why am I sitting here in front of the game if I'm not going to be distracted? So I set myself up for that, but I wanted to be paying attention to the game. And she knew that, but you know what? When she had something important to share with me and the hit happened on TV and I was like, boom, taken up by the TV, um, it caused problems and she felt disrespected. My bad, seriously, really. It was, it was on me that she felt that way and I did disrespect her. I was taken away from that moment and sucked into another priority. It's what the texting generation has done for all of us. It has caused us to have the potential to be entirely distracted by a small intermittent piece of information that takes us away from what's truly important. That's really boiled up in a nutshell what this topic this week is all about. For your Motivational Monday, Get yourself some great, some great, some, some gratitude, <laughs> some gratefulness going and some gratitude and do yourself a favor this week and be mindful of the times where you are tempted to text or to shorten attention span things or the times when you are tempted to keep your phone or in this case, it was a TV in a, in a restaurant as a second priority. And when you pull it out or look up to the TV, it becomes the first priority for you. No matter what else is going on, no matter who's in front of you, you have just completely taken them out of the equation and you have made whatever distraction your number one priority. Um, absolutely, Paula. Um, and I think all of us have done it. The stuff on your phone, more important than the people you're hanging with, uh, certainly, certainly uh, makes it look like they're more important than you. And thanks, Debbie, for your, for your message. And um, absolutely, um, here's the thing. Your best self is in pro present moment awareness. And the challenges we have as the texting generation is overwhelming to our brain and nervous system. Yes, Debbie Grant, when we can get into gratefulness, we are in a peaceful state. And when we are in a peaceful state, we don't feel compelled to be distracted and taken off of present moment. It all comes together in a beautiful, beautiful way. So as we are rewiring our brain in this texting generation that we belong to. We have to be mindful of where we're being taken and decide, is that where we want to be taken? I don't want to be distracted for a moment, taking away from the person I'm cued in with and having dinner with. I don't want that to happen ever again. I want to be present moment awareness 
and I want to give the human being in front of me number one priority. That's what I want. That's how I want to be. I have to keep rewiring my brain because the texting generation that we're living in is rewiring us toward that instant distraction, that distraction now, distraction now, distraction here, distraction there. Every one of us has ADHD for God's sake but you don't have to let that be the way. Hold yourself back when you're driving, hold yourself back when you're in a meeting, hold yourself back when you're talking to someone personally. And for goodness sake, pick up the phone, actually call people, use your phone as a phone. It does more than texting and Facebook. Just thought I'd remind you. And the human being on the other end of the phone call is gonna be happy to hear from you because human beings want to talk to other people. We are social beings and we want to be connected. A text message does not solve all of those connections. If you are texting and using texting, we all do. It's a vehicle of living in this 21st century. Use it in the way that it was intended. Use it in the ways that it's going to serve your highest, best interest and don't use it as a replacement for every other type of communication. It doesn't replace email. It doesn't replace phone calls. It doesn't replace whatever else, okay? It does not replace any other gold standard of communication. So be a lovely, lovely, grateful person this week. Be present with your driving, with your meetings, with the people that you're meeting with. Make a few phone calls this week more than you normally would and see if that doesn't help you feel awesome and connected to others. The texting generation is causing your attention span to shrink. Do not be a willing victim of your shrunken attention span. You need concentration and focus to be successful, to be present, to connect with people, to do good work, to have a successful marriage or relationship, to be able to parent your kids, to be able to drive without smashing into something. You need present moment awareness and focus and concentration to be a successful human being. Don't be trapped in the texting generation of shrunken attention spans and let that be okay. Rewire your brain for success. There you have it. All right, ladies, your own distinctions and what you picked up and what you're committed to doing this week, feel free to post below in the comments. If you have not worked with me, if you want to change your life and change your career, you better think about doing something meaningful and something that is going to cause a great deal of commitment on your half. If you need to change things for your career, if you want to get things on track that haven't been on track for a while, if you want to strategically navigate that bully boss or toxic work environment, or if maybe you've quit your job and the options are starting to run out, you might need that strategic boost and that help, and you probably need to overcome some job trauma. We do all of that in my 12-week kick-ass workshop, but here's the catch. We don't invite just anyone into that workshop. We have to know that you have a problem that we fix and that we can help you, and frankly, that you meet the criteria that we use uh, to determine the best clients in our workshop. So if that might be you, that's why we offer free clarity calls. We want to dive in and sort out and get you exactly the clarity of what's really going on in your career or that no career. If you happen to have gotten fired, laid off or quit your job, there's real consequences to sitting around and not getting a great result there. So please make a commitment to yourself, book a free career clarity call. Let us help you sort it out. If you're a fit for our workshop, fine. We'll talk about that. If not, there's perhaps another solution for you. And we will be glad to sort that out with you and also glad and happy to meet you and to know you on a deeper level. We have insight, knowledge, and expertise on professional career matters that are unparalleled in the industry. And we help women advance their careers and their lives faster than anyone. 12 weeks is a magical number for us. And we've changed lives in that time frame. We love doing it. And if it's the right fit for you, let's rock and roll and get that to happen. So book your career clarity call with mofall.com slash live clarity call. And we'll know that we're, that you're here from this Facebook live. We're happy to take care of you and get that time booked for you. We are here for you. And remember, I want to help you make this your best year ever. 
and for next year to even be better than that. Ladies who have worked with me, Debbie and Paula and Chira, who's in the workshop and Holly, um, I love seeing you here. All you other ladies, it's been a pleasure to have you here today. Make some commitments for yourself on this topic, present moment awareness and cut back that short attention span. It's robbing you of great connections with other human beings and it's robbing you of your success. Rock on this week. I'll see you next time for Motivational Monday. This is Coach Mo. You can find me at mofall.com and we've got all sorts of information for you there. See you next time.